Welcome to Unfuck Your Brain, the only podcast that teaches you how to use psychology, feminism, and coaching to rewire your brain and get what you want in life. And now here's your host, Harvard Law School grad, feminist rock star, and master coach, Kara Lowenthal. Howdy, my friends. This is a little extra podcast goodness for this week because I think because January is coming up and people are starting to really think about what they want to create next year and how they want to change, I'm getting a lot more, which is awesome, emails and contact from you guys and Facebook messages and however (laughs) y'all reach me through the web. And so I wanted to kind of address today not just like a couple of the questions I get asked that all sort of go together. And to me, they all go under the kind of heading of like, what actually is coaching even? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, I think we all, a lot of us have been to therapy or we've at least seen therapy in the movies. And so we have some idea of like what therapy is or how it's supposed to work. Like you go every week and you talk about your family and your past and maybe your feelings and it sort of goes on for a while. You know, it can go on for years. Like people have some idea about that. But people don't really know what coaching is. And I think they often think it's sort of like therapy and there are ways that it is in ways that it's really different. And I'm not just defining coaching as being comparable or dissimilar from therapy, but just in general, I think people don't really know what coaching is. Maybe some of you had sports coaches, like that's kind of the last time you had a coach. So I kind of want to explain what coaching is and where it makes a difference and where it doesn't, right? Coaching is not the answer for everyone. Well, I don't know if that's true. I feel like everyone could benefit from a coach. But that doesn't mean that at any given time in your life, like coaching is always the perfect option, right? If you are really dysfunctional, if you are not really able to function, like you are not able to hold down a job, you are not able to take care of yourself physically. And I'm talking about the basics, not like you're not running marathons, but like you're not able to kind of feed yourself and get through your day. Like if you are dysfunctional, definitely therapy is the place to go to help you get functional. And coaching is really for people who are basically functional. And I'm not saying your life's everything you want, but like you can feed yourself and get out of the house and you can hold down a job, right? Your life is functioning, but it's not as good as it could be, right? Some one way to think about it is that coaching takes people who are functional to amazing, right? Going from a life that like is basically working, but it's not really what you want and a lot of the parts of it aren't working very smoothly or that well, right? Or you're feeling stuck or you're feeling frustrated, you're having trouble, that's where coaching can come in. And so often I think people are curious or even confused about what actually happens when you get coached, like what is it like? So those of you who have listened to the free coaching call I did a few weeks ago heard what it's like. It's essentially a conversation, right? Coaching is a conversation between me or whoever your coach is with you about your specific life and challenges. But the way that I coach and the kind of work that I do, what we are really doing is we are getting into your thoughts. So my job is to show you that your thoughts are not reality. You all understand that in theory, and you 100% don't understand it in reality. <laughs> right? Like Everybody would agree if you ask them that their thoughts are not reality. But when you pick any particular thought, we are all going to defend the death how it's really true. Right? We all, but we like believe in the abstract that our thoughts are not reality. But then when it comes to any given thought that's making us miserable and causing problems in our life, we cling to it like Gollum to his precious and we want to defend forever the idea that it is true. So my job as a coach is to really show you the ways in which your thoughts are not true, the ways in which your thoughts are not reality. So I don't, sometimes I think of it as kind of radical questioning. Like my job as a coach is to ask you questions that it never occurred to you to ask yourself. You don't even know that those questions should be asked. And then my uh, the other part of my job is once we figured out what thoughts you do have and we can see how they're playing out in your life, right, that's part of my job is to show you, well, when you think you're not good enough, here's the kind of person you go on a second date with even though you don't really like him, and then here's how you end up in this terrible relationship, <laughs> right, just for one cycle. Like when you don't think you're good enough, here's how you act in relationship to your supervisor and in that pitch meeting, and here's what you produce in your career from that thought. So my job is to help you figure out what those thoughts are, show you what those thoughts are creating for you, and then to help you change it. So I get a lot of emails and have conversations with you guys where you're telling me that you've tried to implement what I teach on the podcast and you don't think you're doing it right. 
you're not good at it, you don't get it, you are sort of failing at it because it's not changing everything you want it to change. That is just your perfectionism and your self-critical kind of brain using coaching to beat yourself up, <laughs> right? That part of your brain will like, take any excuse to be mean to you and it's using coaching. The truth is changing your thoughts, it is simple, but it is not easy. It's simple in that I can explain it in two seconds. You think one thing now, you feel a certain way, you act a certain way. You need to change what you think and then you'll change how you feel and how you act. There you go, 30 seconds. I, I explained it. <laughs> but that's not enough for you to be able to do it, right? It's simple, but it's not easy. And so those of you who are frustrated or being beating yourselves up or being down on yourselves that you haven't been able to change everything just from listening to the podcast, that's totally normal, right? That is normal. Getting some payoff from the podcast and practicing yourself is awesome. If it's helping you at all, that's great. That means you are practicing and learning new things. But of course, there's going to be a lot of times that you aren't able to get there by yourself. This is a totally new skill, and you're trying to teach it to yourself. If you tried to teach yourself to speak Italian, you would like, <laughs> you'd figure some things out, but you would fuck up a lot of it too, right? Because you don't know. You're not an expert. You don't understand the grammar. You don't know the idiomatic expressions. Like, of course. The same is true for coaching, right? If you are having a hard time changing your thoughts, it's not because you can't do it or your brain is different or you're not good enough. It's because it's hard. It's a new skill that you are trying to learn and you don't have the perspective and awareness on yourself. So that is what a coach's job is. It's to help you figure out what you're thinking. It's to show you so you really see what that's creating in your life. It's to teach you how to separate what you're thinking from reality. And then it's to help you find new and better thoughts you can believe. Right? The reason that you have trouble with that yourself is that your brain is already oriented towards the negative thoughts you already have. So that's what all it sees. It's a habit, right? Your brain is in the habit of thinking those negative thoughts. So those are the thoughts it sees most easily. And it's really hard for it to see new thoughts on its own often. That's what a coach does. A coach has a conversation with you where they help you figure out what is a thought you could believe instead. What's a thought you already believe that you don't even know you believe, but that feels better? right? So that's sort of like the basic level of what coaching is. And the way I do it, I mean, there's a million different kinds of life coaching. The way I do it, what we're doing is having a conversation that involves sort of radical questioning and perspective and distance on your own thoughts and feelings so that you can see them clearly, detach from them so that you don't believe them so much, and start to believe something new. That's what I'm doing on, on sort of the first level. On the second level, I am teaching you to do that for yourself. So right now, you may have a hard time figuring out new thoughts to think. Once you work with me or someone else, whatever, if you're working with somebody else who does thought work, right? But part of the point of, I think, most forms of coaching try to teach you to do it yourself, right? So I do not want people coming to me once a week for the rest of their lives. <laughs> That's not how I roll, right? When I work with people, it is we work together intensively for a few months so that we really like solve your major problems, get your life to the level you want it teach you how to coach yourself, and then you can go free. Then you can go forth and coach yourself. And of course, I have clients who come back because like something unexpected happened or, you know, something challenging has come up or the opposite, like they want to create and do something new and exciting and they want to be, be sure that they're like onto themselves and managing their thoughts about that. But in general, you're not coming every week for the rest of your life, right? It is a time-limited intensive process where I teach you a new set of tools and skills that you can then use yourself to actually change the way you think on purpose when you want to and to manage your own emotional life so that you know how to create the emotions you want to create. So that is what coaching is. <laughs> it's basically a transformative conversation. And there's also sort of exercises that you do on your own and practice that you do. But in its essence, it is a transformational conversation. It's not like 12 Eyes of Newt and Macbeth switches or I don't know what people think is going to happen in a coaching call. All right, But that's what it is. So that's like sort of general. I'm going to just tell you a few specific things that I teach, which I've talked about on the podcast, right, to give you an example. So for example, when I work with people, I teach them the unfuck your brain model. That's the core of all the coaching I do. And I talk to you guys all the time about different ways of learning to change your thoughts. The model is a concrete five-step process you use to separate your thoughts and feelings from reality 
and to change your thoughts whenever you want. The model is what helps you differentiate an external circumstance, your thought, your feeling, your action, and the result you create. Without the model, it is very hard to control your thoughts or feelings. It's the framework that you use. Right? You guys all know that I used to be a lawyer, so we really like standards and steps to go through. So that's the model, right? Another one of the tools that I teach is called the manual, and there's two versions of this. And in, with the manual, what I do is I'm teaching you the unwritten manual that you have for how other people and yourself should behave. So there's sort of an other people manual and a you manual. And in the other people manual, all of the frustration and anger and resentment and sadness and hurt feelings, all those feelings you think other people cause are actually caused by your thoughts, right? We talk about this all the time on the podcast. The manual teaches you how to really see which of your thoughts are causing those feelings and why you want other people to be different, right? So it shows you the ways in which you're trying to get other people to be different so that you can feel how you want to feel. Right, and the ways you're trying to manipulate and manage other people's behavior so that you can feel how you want. So it sort of turns that like rug or pattern over so you can see the other side. So you can see how and why you are so invested in other people being different to create the feelings that you want to have. And the manual shows you how to just create those feelings for yourself. Right, so if you want to feel self-confident, how to do that yourself rather than trying to create a situation for somebody else to give you praise so you can feel confident. It's also a way we use the manual to help you figure out what your unrealistic and perfectionistic expectations of yourself are. So figuring out what's the unwritten manual you have for yourself about exactly what you're supposed to do. And you guys will be amazed. It is hilarious how specific it is. When you really, you have no idea. You just feel kind of guilty in general, like you should be a better person and you should work out more and you should be thinner and you should be nicer. But when you really get in there, your brain has like a million really specific rules for you that you aren't even conscious of that are making you crazy and that are creating all that guilt and shame. When you learn how to use the kind of self-manual tool to see what those rules are, those unwritten, unconscious rules you have for yourself, that's when you're able to start turning those into more realistic, kinder, more reasonable guidelines for yourself. Another example, something I teach in depth, is called the relationship vision. So whether you're trying to find the love of your life or you are in a long-term relationship and you're trying to keep it like sort of alive and the relationship you want, I can almost guarantee that you are focusing on the wrong things because we are all taught to, especially in romantic relationships, we are all taught that somebody else is supposed to meet our needs and create our feelings for us. And we spend so much energy trying to manipulate and manage them into giving us the feeling we want and interpreting everything they say and do through the prism of our own insecurity. And do not think for a second that just because you've been married for 20 years, you're not doing this. You're still doing it. <laughs> I see this in my clients all the time. What the relationship vision teaches you how to create a vision of a relationship that focuses on the parts you can control and the ways that you can create the relationship you want rather than expecting someone else to deliver it to you. I also teach what I call the moral neutralizer, which is a tool that you use to demoralize all of the choices that you make. We use this a lot when it comes to food and movement. But not just there, also a lot when it comes to our, um, our relationships with other people, right? And our relationships with ourselves and our own thoughts. We are, like humans are basically, at least the humans in this sociological context, are like moralizing machines. We are constantly sorting what's good, what's bad, what's virtuous, what's sinful, what's acceptable, what's unacceptable, what you can feel good about, what you can feel guilty about. When you learn to see the way that you are attaching a moral value to your choices, to your actions, to what you say, to what you do, to what you eat, to how you move. You are loading so much moral value on everything, even your own thoughts, right? It makes it impossible to change anything. The reason you feel terrible about yourself is you assign a moral value to your thoughts. The reason you can't be consistent with your eating and exercise is that you assign a moral value to what you eat and how you move. That kind of moral extremism produces all this guilt and shame, and it keeps you on this seesaw, right? This on again, on again, off again bandwagon when it comes to eating and exercise, or this emotional whiplash of feeling like a great daughter or a terrible daughter, or feeling like an amazing girlfriend or a terrible girlfriend. 
right? All that emotional back and forth has to do with having so much moral judgment all the time about how you act. It completely stymies your ability to actually change, ironically. Your brain tells you that moralizing will motivate you, but it actually does the opposite. So that's something else that I work on with people a lot. So those are sort of just a few of the different ways that I work with people, but I just want to give you guys some examples of what are the kind of tools I teach, what's the kind of thing you learn how to do, and what happens in coaching. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight into my world and what we do. The last thing I want to mention, because I've also gotten a bunch of questions about this, I think, again, because January is coming up, people have been writing in and asking me what's going on with the Unfuck Your Brain program or what ways there will be to work with me in the new year and all of those kinds of like what's available. So January 1st is the last day to enroll in Unfuck Your Brain. The course is getting pretty close to fall and it starts the first week of January. And it's not just a like sign up online thing. We have to have a consultation process because I need to talk to you to figure out what you want to create and achieve in your life if you're the right fit for the program, if the program is the right fit for you, if I think I'm the right person to help you. Right? There's a couple of things that we have to figure out together. So if you've been kind of thinking about it and putting it off and aren't sure and you're like, maybe I'll look into it in January, do not wait <laughs> because you need to do it now. I think this podcast is going to be released on Thursday, the 28th. So there's really only like four more days. I am saving time this weekend to do the last few consultation calls. So if you want one of those to be with you, you need to hustle on over and sign up like right now. You can fill out the application by clicking the link in the iTunes description of this podcast or just go to www.unfckyourbrain, unfuck your brain without the U, dot com forward slash application. So unfuck your brain without the U, unfckyourbrain.com forward slash application. And again, January 1st will be the last day to enroll and we have to have a short conversation and a longer conversation before that. So it's a two-step consultation process and it's going to have to happen in the next few days. It is not too late and I do have a few spots left and I would love to have some more of you podcast listeners in there and those of you listening who are already in. I'm super excited to get started with you guys. So get a move on, my loves. Let's make 2018 the year you learn the most important skill you can ever learn. All right. I will talk to all of you in 2018. How crazy. Have a great new year. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to start building your confidence right away, you can download a free confidence cheat sheet at www.carlowenthile.com slash podcast confidence. <laughs>